Welcome to Client's webinar. A uh, very good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all the attendees joining us for this uh, webinar on trends and changes taking place in the global wax industry today. My name is Pooja Sharma, and I work as a project manager in Client's Energy Practice. Uh, I'm responsible for end-to-end -end management of clients' uh, market research reports uh, for waxes. And uh, therefore, I'm here today to present some of the uh, top line findings from our client's recently completed study on the global wax industry. So before I go ahead and start with my presentation, let me quickly uh, run you through uh, some of the, uh, through uh, the report. Uh, let me introduce you to the report from which my today's uh, uh, presentation has been sourced. So the contents of my today's uh, presentation have been sourced from clients' recently completed report on global wax industry, market analysis and opportunities. That's the title of the study. And uh, this report has been uh, published very recently in December 2021. Uh, this is basically our seventh in-depth uh, report publication on this topic. And the full report provides uh, an analysis of how the global wax industry was impacted in 2020 and what kind of recovery this market has uh, experienced uh, in 2021. So largely the study reports uh, post-COVID trends on both uh, back supply as well as application side. And the base year for estimates in the study are 2020, uh, 2021. Uh, however, uh, the study also provides 2020 estimates uh, for uh, for the benefits of our uh, subscribers to give them a more rounded picture of uh, what this industry went through or endured during the uh, economic downturn uh, in the last couple of uh, years. So while my uh, uh, current presentation uh, is uh, a summary, uh, top line finding of uh, our report, the full study provides a much more detailed appraisal of the complex uh, wax market. Uh, it is a global report and it covers uh, all, all key geographies across uh, the world, including North America, Latin America, Europe, uh, Asia, and Middle East and Africa. Uh, regional profiles on, on these, uh, these uh, geographic regions provide an in-depth view of uh, supply of all types of vaccines in these regions. Uh, a very detailed plant-wise analysis has been performed uh, to come up with supply estimates for all of these regions, uh, as well as uh, these profiles also uh, provide uh, key VAX applications in each of these regions, uh, explaining which applications are growing and which applications are slowing down. And then finally, the findings for each of these regions have, uh, are, are summarized um, in form of an analysis and appraisal, regional appraisal, which also points out to the current opportunities and challenges in, this, in these regions in the wax uh, area. The study also provides very detailed product profiles uh, for key types of waxes. And uh, uh, these product profiles basically provide definitions, grades, and properties of uh, key types of waxes, and also provide a detailed plant-wise analysis uh, of, uh, on the supply side Plus, they also explore uh, uh, key applications for each of these uh, vaccines um, in, in detail. In addition to this, a very valuable uh, section on pricing uh, is there in the chapter that basically provides uh, pricing for all key types of vaccines. Um, it not only assesses the current prices of uh, uh, top uh, vax types, uh, it also provides a regional uh, pricing trend for all of these vaccines, uh, explaining how these vaccines have moved over the, over the years um, uh, and, and provides a good background on the pricing uh, area. These pricing uh, the pricing chapter also provides, uh, uh, basically just describes the key influences uh, that, uh, uh, that uh, impact vax prices in the wax industry. The entire report is uh, weaved around a detailed uh, global VAX model, market model, uh, which includes uh, detailed supply estimates for all of the regions, as well as detailed demand estimates 
for several applications split across uh, various fact types. So it's a pretty in-depth model that comes along with this study. The research for this uh, report is primarily based on in-depth expert interviews. Um, extensive interviews were conducted with uh, industry experts belonging to uh, the entire wax value chain, including uh, informed people belonging to base oil refining, um, uh, uh, refine, base, oil, base oil refineries, as well as wax producing refineries and synthetic wax producing plants. Uh, interviews were also conducted with uh, people from the oiling establishments, uh, people belonging to marketing background, trading and broking of uh, waxes, as well as people with a uh, well-founded uh, background in uh, formulating uh, waxes and uh, blending of waxes. Uh, and of course, uh, people belonging to key application areas such as candles, port sizing and packaging. Uh, in addition to this, uh, information uh, has also been derived from several sec secondary sources. Uh, there are uh, several associations with databases on uh, candles, uh, databases on faxes, uh, trade uh, associations, as well as uh, vegetable oil associations and uh, uh, boards. Um, in addition to this, looking at the economic and business data, especially in the current times, was essential. Uh, for which several global economic organizations uh, databases were assessed, as well as uh, regional government databases were assessed to understand uh, more uh, regional economic and business uh, background. Information and data thus collected via interviews as well as secondary sources was then comprehended and funneled into our in-house uh, analysis. And uh, here I would uh, like to highlight that uh, on the, the supply side uh, estimates for this uh, report, again, were uh, developed by conducting uh, a detailed plant-wise analysis of uh, petroleum waxes, as well as uh, several synthetic waxes, such as FD, PE, and alpha olefin. Uh, the demand estimates uh, for this report were, were uh, developed based on consumption patterns and trends in uh, each of the application area. Uh, in fact, the focus for uh, demand estimates was uh, tied to regional economic forecast as well as uh, changing consumer preferences in the overall uh, tax industry. So with that, moving on to the main presentation, um, this slide provides an overview of uh, how the global wax industry is structured and, uh, its, uh, and, and its components in the supply chain. Overall, waxes can be classified into four key types, including petroleum waxes, which are basically produced as a byproduct of uh, group one uh, uh, base, base oil production plants. And these waxes can also be produced via another technology where uh, they are basically extracted um, from uh, heavy crude oil. And we shall uh, look at that uh, in the following slides as well. <clears throat> synthetic waxes, uh, among synthetic waxes, key types include uh, uh, FD waxes, which are uh, basically produced as, uh, uh, as a part of, uh, from Fisher Trophs technology in uh, GTL. Uh, uh, fuels production plants as well as uh, CTL plants. Uh, and then there are uh, polymer waxes such as uh, polyethylene and polypropylene, which are produced uh, from uh, uh, ethylene, uh, polymerization of ethylene. And then uh, the smaller category of synthetic waxes here is alpha olefins, which are basically produced uh, in uh, full, uh, full scale linear alpha olefin uh, production plants. Uh, basically, the heavier chains of carbons uh, that are produced uh, in, in such plants can be diverted to uh, wax-like applications. Uh, and then amongst uh, natural waxes, there are vegetable or plant source waxes, as well as animal or insect uh, waxes. Amongst vegetable waxes, um, palm and soy wax are the leading categories. Uh, these waxes are uh, produced from uh, hydrogenation of palm and soy oil. Uh, in fact, palm waxes are also produced from palm kernels. Uh, and some of the more speciality vegetable waxes include carnauba and candelia, 
which are uh, sourced from plants and shrubs um, in, uh, in countries like uh, Mexico and Brazil. Uh, in, in animal or insect sourced waxes, the key types include beeswax and tallow. And there's a stark difference uh, between the quality of uh, two types of waxes. Uh, beeswax uh, is, uh, is uh, sourced from honeycombs and uh, it is supposed to be of uh, very uh, high quality. Um, it's, it's, it also commands uh, 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 higher prices. And uh, then there is tallow, which is supposed to be inferior, inferior in quality and uh, is a relatively low price. It is uh, basically produced from uh, animal fat. Uh, so these uh, four uh, wax uh, types uh, pretty much form the, uh, pretty much are the stalwarts uh, of the global wax uh, industry and uh, direct their supply. Uh, overall supply chain uh, also includes some of the middle entities which are involved in refining, uh, finishing, blending, and packaging of waxes. For example, de-oilers. There are about six large de-oilers uh, spread across the globe, and uh, de-oilers are very important to this industry. Uh, they, they source raw waxes uh, from wax producers and uh, refine them, finish them, and package them into finished products for the end users. And similarly, uh, other entities uh, are involved like pet, uh, like uh, upgraders and specialty wax blenders. Uh, there are formulators and brokers of waxes and packages of waxes which, uh, which uh, deliver uh, finished forms or customized forms of waxes in, in these applications. Uh, typically in, uh, in cases where uh, bulk shipments of waxes are required by end users and no specific formulation or blends are required. Um, uh, supply of waxes sometimes takes directly, uh, takes place directly from the producers towards uh, the end users. Whereas in cases where specific formulations or blends of waxes are required, customized products are required by end users, uh, the, the supply takes place via uh, blenders, formulators, or other uh, middle establishments. Uh, and then on the application side, there are uh, several applications. Waxes are used across several industries spread, up, uh, spread across uh, a number of uh, uh, industries and applications. Uh, and some of the, the more visible ones or prominent ones include the uh, candles, um, candle is nearly 99% of wax and uh, boat sizing and packaging where uh, again waxes are used uh, for coating and for binding uh, the material together. Other than this, waxes are also uh, used uh, as uh, additives in several applications uh, such as rheology and surface-based applications uh, uh, where these waxes are used for uh, improving the rheological or surface properties of uh, in, in several applications like PVC, um, and PVC waxes are used for uh, intermolecular lubrication as well as uh, providing lubrication between PVC resins as, and, and the equipment, processing equipment. Um, there are several other fast growing applications like hot melt adhesives and master batches and ink stains and coatings. And in fact, waxes are also used in uh, healthcare products, cosmetics products, uh, and some personal care products where uh, they basically act as carriers of uh, additives and other materials, uh, other active ingredients uh, in these products and also provide uh, help in providing structure to some of these products. Uh, food grade taxes are also uh, high in demand. They are also used in uh, uh, some of the coating applications, uh, waxes are used for coating of uh, fruits and vegetables, uh, as well as coating of cheese and uh, some other products as well. Uh, and they can also be used as uh, uh, lubricating uh, agents or uh, processing aids in, uh, in uh, bakery um, uh, sort of applications and meat processing. Other than these, uh, waxes are used in several industrial and agricultural applications as well. For example, in agriculture, uh, agricultural applications, uh, waxes are used in seed treatment and uh, uh, fertilizer and uh, fertilizers and pesticides as uh, release agents. 
um, and then industrial applications like cable filling, thrust proofing, um, and road construction. So, uh, and, and this list is uh, not totally exhaustive. Uh, so overall, vaccines are used over a large number of uh, applications in several end-use industries. So with that background on the uh, global wax industry, let's uh, move ahead and uh, look at the global wax uh, market. Supply of uh, all types of vaccines globally currently is at 10.9 billion pounds. And uh, a large share of uh, this supply is uh, petroleum vaccines, which account for about 64% uh, of uh, the total uh, market composition. And uh, this is followed by synthetic vaccines at about 18% and vegetable vaccines at 14% with a balance as uh, animal or other vaccines. Geographically, Asia is the largest producer of all types of vaccines, accounting for more than half of uh, the global supply of vaccines. And uh, nearly three fourths of uh, all vaccines produced in Asia are the petroleum vaccines. Uh, so which also makes Asia the largest uh, producer of petroleum vaccines uh, globally. In addition to this, uh, Asia also leads globally in terms of uh, synthetic vax supply. Uh, it is home to some of the most prominent FT vax producers and has a large uh, PE vax uh, production uh, base as well. However, when it comes to uh, high purity, high quality vaccines, uh, other regions such as North America and Europe lead uh, globally uh, because these regions are home to uh, some of the most prominent uh, high quality uh, uh, synthetic vax producers, uh, specifically those vaccines that are produced via the direct polymerization uh, process. And this is not to say that these regions are not prominent, uh, prominent in, in terms of uh, petroleum wax production. Uh, they are also home to some of the leading petroleum wax suppliers. For example, uh, in North America, there are a couple of uh, plants belonging to ExxonMobil uh, that, uh, that supply large quantities of petroleum waxes. Uh, and then other important suppliers in the region include Polyfrontier and Calumet. And even Europe uh, is home to some of the some of very important petroleum wax producers. Uh, for example, there is uh, HNR. HNR has two petroleum wax production facilities in Europe, and uh, and supplies uh, mainstream petroleum waxes as well as uh, uh, specialty petroleum waxes. Uh, there are several others uh, such as ENI and Sonatrach, and that's that's. That's not an exhaustive list. There's, there are, there's, there's a huge uh, supply base for petroleum vaccines in Europe as well. However, uh, the supply of petroleum vaccines uh, from these two regions has been declining. Uh, these basically North America and Europe have seen a severe decline in petroleum vaccine supply over the last 10 to 15 years. And this has now become more like a global trend impacting the overall supply of petroleum vaccines. Just to give a brief uh, background on uh, how petroleum vaccines are associated with the production of coupon base oils uh, for the benefit of those listeners who are uh, new to this topic. Uh, <clears throat> so basically, um, uh, production of petroleum wax. Petroleum waxes are produced as a byproduct of uh, group one base oil production in group one base stock uh, refineries. And uh, uh, so, so their supply is uh, sort of associated with the uh, group one base stock uh, or base oil production. And the global trend uh, in, the, uh, in the base oils market is uh, that uh, the Finnish lubricants market, which basically consume, uh, to, uh, consume these uh, base oils, uh, is increasingly moving towards uh, higher uh, quality base stocks such as uh, group two, group two plus, and uh, group three, group three plus even higher. Uh, and this is driven by the overall uh, demand from the largely driven by the, uh, driven by the demand from the automotive uh, industry. So globally, the demand for group one base oils is uh, declining, and uh, this is forcing uh, group one plants 
uh, across uh, uh, Europe, largely across Europe and uh, North America, uh, to either shut down or to upgrade to facilities uh, for producing higher quality base soils. And again, these rationalizations have been uh, pretty prominent in the last 10 years in uh, North America and Europe. Uh, for example, North America has seen some of uh, the very some of very significant shutdowns, such as uh, Shell's Montreal plant uh, that stopped producing Groupon Bay soils in 2010, uh, and then uh, there is uh, there was uh, a clo closure uh, right uh, the very next year uh, of uh, Imperial Oil Sarnia plant, and some of the more recent ones uh, include uh, Imperial Oil Stratacona plant in Canada and uh, ExxonMobil's uh, Piermont plant in the US. Even Europe has seen some of uh, very, uh, some of very uh, uh, significant closures uh, for uh, group one plants, for example, uh, BP Scoyton plant in the UK, uh, Sepsa's Helua plant in Spain, and uh, Shell, Shell's Grassbrook plant in Germany. Uh, in fact, even Russia is seeing uh, some group one closures, such as uh, Ryazan plant, and uh, belonging to Rosneft and uh, other facilities of Rosneft are also slowly converting to higher, uh, higher base oil production facilities. And in fact, one of the very recent uh, closure uh, of uh, Krupan plant in Europe has been uh, in 2020. Uh, Total squad Frivel plant in France uh, stopped producing Krupan base oils, and this plant also produced petroleum taxes. So uh, the overall storyline here is that the supply of uh, petroleum backses uh, is uh, declining. Having said that, uh, petroleum backses uh, are also produced via a different technology, uh, where uh, these backses uh, are extracted or deoiled from crude oil, heavy crude oil. And uh, this type of technology or uh, such plants uh, uh, that have this capability largely exist uh, in one part of the world currently, which is uh, China. China is home to uh, very large petrochemical uh, refineries that uh, basically pr uh, process very heavy crude. These refineries are located uh, in, in, in the northern part of China or in the northeastern part of China, which is uh, also, uh, also the part of the world where uh, Daqing oil field exists. And this oil field produces very heavy uh, grade crude oil, uh, which has uh, wax content as high as 15% to 30%. So to be able to process uh, this crude, these Chinese petrochemical refineries uh, need to remove uh, waxes right, right up front from crude oil. And uh, as a result of this uh, process, uh, these petrochemical plants uh, also end up producing large volumes of uh, uh, petroleum waxes, uh, which are again uh, pumped into the uh, overall wax market. And once again, the supply of petroleum wax from these uh, refineries is not associated uh, with the production of uh, group one base oils, uh, which means that the supply is independent of uh, the global trend of declining demand for group one base oils. Um, in fact, uh, a plant-wise analysis done uh, during uh, the course of our research for this uh, project also revealed that uh, the, the supply of petroleum waxes from these refineries has uh, in fact increased over the years. Now, was this uh, growth in supply uh, from these refineries, uh, growth in supply of petroleum waxes from these refineries uh, enough for meeting up for meeting up uh, making making up for the loss uh, in petroleum tax uh, supply uh, drop that we've seen in uh, in uh, from base oil refineries. Uh, I would say not, uh, certainly not. But uh, these uh, this supply also plays a vital role in providing some uh, uh, resilience or some support to the overall tax uh, industry. In terms of different geographies, uh, as we look at the historic supply trend uh, in uh, key petroleum wax producing regions, 
it is pretty uh, it is pretty evident that uh, petroleum wax production is declining in Europe and North America, and uh, in fact, it has been growing uh, in Asia, particularly driven by the crude oil uh, derived petroleum waxes that are produced uh, in the Chinese supply chains. Uh, in fact, uh, during the period from 2015 and 2017, there was an uptrend uh, in supply of uh, crude oil derived petroleum waxes uh, from China. Um, uh, during this period, uh, some of uh, the large petrochemical plants in China had just completed their uh, expansion projects and uh, relocation projects and uh, they, they started processing crude again and started pumping in large volumes of uh, petroleum waxes uh, into uh, the wax market. Uh, in 2020, uh, while the supply of uh, petroleum waxes was impacted uh, in all uh, key regions, um, in 2021, it was observed that uh, Asian markets uh, recovered quickly from this uh, drop. Uh, whereas uh, the supply from Europe uh, has uh, not yet recovered. And there is a less likelihood uh, that uh, the supply from these other regions will go back to its uh, 2019 uh, pre-COVID level, uh, primarily because of uh, some impending refinery closures, as well as uh, in 2020, Europe also saw a uh, closure of one of, uh, one of the major uh, Group 1 uh, base stock uh, production plant that also produces waxes, uh, uh, which is uh, Total's uh, plant. So declining, uh, declining supply of the soil derived petroleum waxes uh, has uh, sort of created a vacuum or vacated uh, the market space for uh, other materials to grow in this uh, market. And uh, this is where synthetic and vegetable waxes uh, come into uh, the spotlight. Um, in fact, wax market has shown a significant uh, versatility or uh, adeptness in, in absorbing alternative wax types uh, uh, in several applications uh, in the face of in, insufficient supply of petroleum waxes uh, in, in the last uh, few years. Uh, in fact, uh, over the last uh, decade, uh, the supply composition uh, in the wax market has seen some significant changes where the supply of uh, base oil derived petroleum waxes uh, has, has, has declined significantly, dropped significantly uh, from about 56% to 43%. And during the same period, the supply of uh, the, the share of synthetic waxes in the overall wax uh, market composition and the share of vegetable waxes in this composition has uh, experienced uh, have experienced uh, a growth. Uh, in fact, uh, in, in this last decade, uh, synthetic waxes and vegetable waxes have seen uh, the most significant growth uh, uh, in in the wax market. Uh, some of the synthetic waxes, such as uh, FD waxes, uh, have uh, more than doubled due to uh, uh, more than doubled uh, their uh, supply in 2011 uh, due to some major expansions by large global suppliers as well as new capacity additions in China. Uh, even PE waxes, uh, the supply of PE waxes has uh, increased by nearly half of its volume in 2011 uh, due to uh, capacity expansions in both uh, direct polymerization uh, technology as well as uh, uh, byproduct technology. And uh, alpha olefin wax supply has also more than doubled over the years uh, due to new supply additions uh, in, in North America. And vegetable waxes have also grown significantly. Uh, the supply of these waxes has grown by nearly three times uh, or three folds in, uh, that of that of uh, 2011, uh, primarily driven by their ability to replace softer petroleum waxes in some applications as well as uh, the greener appeal that these waxes have uh, to themselves. So all of these waxes, uh, synthetic and vegetable, are currently experiencing a strong growth. Uh, however, uh, in current uh, post-COVID environment, uh, with sustainability trends uh, strengthening, 
The question that has become more pertinent in this market is uh, how sustainable are these growing vaccines? Uh, do they fit well in the overall sustainability drive globally? Uh, are consumers, uh, are consumer preferences changing in order to make uh, their end products more uh, sustainable and lower on carbon footprints? And which of these vaccines uh, stand, stand out when it comes to offering uh, sustainable uh, products? Among six, uh, synthetic vaccines, uh, it is uh, pretty uh, evident that byproduct uh, PE vaccines are the ones that upstage uh, most other synthetic vaccines. And uh, in fact, uh, PE vaccines that are derived uh, via thermal degradation of waste plastics, uh, which is a process uh, by which uh, waste plastics can be converted uh, into finished oils and waxes that, that can be reused uh, in, in several applications uh, is one technology that stands out. And this, this, these kind of PE waxes uh, are the ones that, uh, that stand out uh, or upstage most other synthetic waxes. Uh, they, they basically uh, provide uh, the, uh, the, the option of replacing end of life concept with uh, regeneration uh, in the plastics industry, which is uh, one of the most vexed industries when it comes to uh, waste generation. And this thermal cracking uh, technology is not new to the wax industry. The, the technology has existed uh, since uh, years now. Uh, so it is uh, pretty adoptable and uh, looks like a viable solution uh, for future. Another innovative uh, solution is uh, in the synthetic category is uh, bio-based PE vaccines. Uh, this type of product is currently uh, has been introduced uh, by uh, Braschem, which is uh, a Brazilian petrochemicals uh, company. And uh, they basically produce uh, bio-based uh, PE vaccines that are sourced from ethanol. Uh, which is again sourced from sugarcane, a hundred percent renewable source. Such products will uh, be of importance uh, for uh, end users who are looking to reduce their carbon footprints uh, in, in their uh, finished products. Uh, one example is of uh, Enews, which is uh, which is a European uh, chemicals company. Uh, Ineos has uh, recently introduced a line of uh, bio-based PVC uh, under its uh, BioWin brand name. So such products uh, are uh, going to be of importance to uh, such uh, end users. Uh, vegetable vaccines, uh, which are sourced from plants, have uh, already been considered green or renewable since a very long time. And uh, these vaccines may seem to have hit, nail, hit the nail right on the head. Um, however, on contrary, these vaccines have their own limitations and challenges uh, in the wax market. For example, palm vaccines, which, uh, which palm wax, which is the largest category of uh, vegetable wax, uh, is uh, is uh, sometimes uh, tainted with the term the other oil spill. Uh, and uh, this is uh, basically due to the, the negative uh, consumer sentiments uh, that this wax type has uh, gained due to large scale deforestation of uh, tropical forest uh, in Asia so as to grow more plant, uh, palm plantations. Uh, for similar reasons, in fact, uh, EU has also recently uh, capped the usage of palm oil uh, in its uh, future energy mix. Uh, that uh, EU presented in its uh, latest uh, red uh, renewable energy directive. And then uh, soy vaccines uh, are produced from soybean, uh, which uh, also has, uh, which also use, uh, used, which is also used in other applications like um, uh, food based applications as well as for producing fuels. Uh, so soy wax uh, is uh, expected to see some competitions from these other important markets in future uh, when, it, uh, when it comes to growth. Uh, another innovative uh, solution in vegetable wax category uh, that has uh, recently been introduced in the market is uh, rice brine oil wax. Uh, this 
This type of wax has been introduced by Clarient. Uh, Clarient markets this wax under its uh, Lecocare uh, brand name. And uh, in, in contrast to palm and soy waxes, which are uh, uh, low melt waxes and are used in low melt wax applications, this wax is targeted uh, towards uh, high melt uh, market space such as uh, plastics um, and uh, master batches. So while consumers in the wax market may increasingly demand for materials that are uh, produced from cleaner or uh, renewable sources, uh, the industry is uh, still evaluating viable, uh, sustainable uh, wax products and offerings. In the next few slides, I'm going to zoom into uh, the supply scenario for synthetic and vegetable waxes. Uh, globally, uh, the supply of uh, synthetic waxes is basically led uh, by PE, PP waxes, and FP waxes, which together account for 95% uh, of uh, global synthetic wax supply. Um, and so my, my slides are going to be more focused on these two products. Um, the wax market uh, is actually split between uh, two types of technologies. It can be split between two types of technologies, including uh, direct polymerization, uh, PE waxes that are produced by our direct polymerization of ethylene, and uh, PE waxes that can be produced uh, from byproduct material or ca that can be uh, upgraded uh, from uh, waste plastics. Top 10 PE wax supplies globally account for 70% of, uh, of this market. And this includes both the suppliers of uh, direct polymerization PE as well as uh, uh, byproduct PE. Geographically, um, uh, the direct polymerization PE waxes uh, are uh, produced uh, in North America and Europe. Uh, their capacities are more concentrated in these regions. Uh, for example, some of the prominent uh, North American PE wax producers include uh, Honeywell and uh, Westlake. Uh, Westlake uh, markets these. Uh, uh, products under its Epolin brand name. And then there's another important supplier of direct polymerization PE in, in North America, which is uh, Nuceras. Nuceras was uh, first well baker Hughes. It is not, uh, it, it did not make it to the list uh, mentioned here. However, uh, it is an important supplier in the region. Uh, and then in Europe, uh, some of the important suppliers include uh, Clarion. Clarion produces these waxes at two different plants in, in Europe. Uh, markets them under its uh, Lecovax brand name. And uh, there are some other suppliers like BASF and Unospec, all, all three based out of uh, Germany. Overall, uh, of the total PEVAX supply in North America, um, uh, direct polymerization technology PEVAXs account for 80% of the total uh, supply. And in Europe, uh, direct polymerization PE waxes account for more than 60% of the total supply. So basically, the supply in these two regions is currently more uh, focused on direct polymerization, high quality PE waxes. In Asia, direct polymerization PE waxes account for nearly uh, 15 to 20% of the total supply, uh, which is uh, quite small compared to other regions. And some of the key suppliers in the region include uh, Mitsui, Sanyo, Lotte Chemicals, uh, all of them located out of uh, Japan and South Korea. <clears throat> and the uh, rest of the countries in the region uh, are more focused on byproduct PE wax production. Uh, there are several large uh, capacities in the region. For example, uh, Marcus Oil, uh, which is based out of India, uh, Marcus Oil is headquartered in the U.S. However, their uh, facility is based in India, which uh, refines uh, uh, blowdown byproduct uh, of uh, plastic uh, production into finished uh, PE waxes. And then there are other refining capacities such as Shindao Baoni and Sino in China. Um, in fact, uh, 
Europe also has some important byproduct tea wax producers, uh, such as uh, Chime Editic. Uh, the company uh, supplies <clears throat> finished tea wax products um, in, in industrial applications as additives. And uh, another important one in, is uh, Make, which is located out of Sao Paulo in Brazil. Uh, the company has been on uh, expansion in the last few years and continues to expand. Um, and is also the only supply, only producer of uh, polypropylene waxes uh, in Latin America. Okay. Um, in the next uh, 10 years, uh, it is estimated that most growth uh, in PE waxes uh, can be expected uh, from the byproduct technology. Uh, particularly uh, from the technology that involves uh, upgradation of uh, waste plastic or thermal degradation of waste plastic into uh, finished oils and uh, waxes that can be reused. And in fact, this, trade, uh, this trend is also gaining uh, tailwinds uh, from the ongoing global trend towards circular economy and regeneration from, uh, from waste. It is, uh, also a known fact that uh, direct polymerization process is more capital intensive as compared to uh, the byproduct processes. And uh, these, uh, these uh, facilities or capacities are now aging. Uh, in fact, in the next 10 years, it is, uh, it is uh, expected that some of these facilities may even require significant investment uh, in process improvement or reactor improvement and in fact, there is less likelihood of any substantial uh, capacity expansion on this uh, front. And uh, on the other hand, there are trends uh, reflecting uh, or indicating growth in byproduct technology. Uh, based on such market trends, uh, we do believe that uh, more than 60% of growth in uh, PE, PP VAX supply uh, is, is going to come from the byproduct category. Okay, so now let's look at uh, the FTVAX market. Uh, the FTVAX market can broadly be categorized into those taxes that are derived uh, as a part of uh, GTL process or gas, gas to liquids conversion process. And those taxes that are produced uh, in CTL plants that convert uh, coal to liquid uh, fuels. GTL uh, process derived FT waxes are characterized as uh, high purity, um, better quality waxes, and these are being produced by Sasol uh, in South Africa and by Shell in Malaysia. And uh, CTL process derived waxes are relatively inferior in quality. Uh, the, 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 the molecules of these waxes have relatively higher uh, molecule, wider molecular dis distribution which basically interferes with their melt point or congealing properties. And then these waxes also contain impurities, uh, which uh, make them uh, darker in color and uh, less harder as compared to those waxes supplied by the uh, GDL technology. Nevertheless, uh, the, uh, the, CDL, the waxes derived from CDL technology uh, are growing. These capacities have been uh, growing at an aggressive rate uh, in China. Uh, for example, uh, there is Yipei, which is uh, a privately owned coal company uh, in China. It started supplying FT waxes in 2014 and has already doubled the, its uh, supply in 2017. And uh, some more recent additions uh, from China include uh, Shenhua, which is a state oil energy enterprise, started producing FT waxes in 2018. And uh, an even uh, more recent one is uh, Future Energy, which is a new entrant into this market, started producing FT waxes in 2020. Uh, the fourth supplier, Luan, uh, started producing FT waxes in 2014 and is also not producing to its full capacity currently uh, due to some uh, environment related issues that this plant is seeing currently in China. However, it is supposed to go back to its uh, original operating rate uh, very soon. 
So basically in the next five to 10 years, the supply of FD vaccines from China is set to grow at a strong pace as uh, Luan recovers to its uh, original operating rate. Future Energy increases its uh, FD vax output and Xinhua also has plans to uh, double its capacity by 2025. So an aggressive growth is uh, expected here. But uh, the question that, uh, again, is more pertinent is, uh, uh, will these CDL vaxes align with the global sustainability goals, uh, especially in an environment where uh, end, use, end users uh, will be looking for uh, more uh, sustainable uh, options as ingredients in their processes? And in fact, some uh, industry experts are of the opinion that uh, the carbon dioxide uh, or the carbon emissions uh, uh, in the process of converting coal to liquid fuels are much higher, even higher than uh, those compared to uh, the process of uh, conversion of uh, crude oil to finished fuels. Uh, plus, this aggressive capacity addition also seems a little counterproductive to the pledge uh, taken by the Chinese government so as to reduce uh, carbon emissions in the next few years. So with that thought, let us uh, move ahead and look at the vegetable wax uh, market. These waxes are renewable plant source. Uh, they, they carry a green label on them uh, due to which they have been gaining tailwinds in the wax, uh, wax industry. Um, in fact, uh, vegetable waxes have uh, grown in the market space of softer waxes such as slack wax, uh, in applications such as candles and to some extent in corrugated boxes. Uh, they've also grown significantly in cosmetics and personal care based applications due to their green appeal, due to their natural appeal. And uh, in fact, vegetable waxes are also now entering newer markets like food packaging, uh, food, uh, food packaging inks as well. And uh, as I discussed uh, some on, 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 on my earlier slides, uh, there's a new vegetable wax uh, uh, based product, which is uh, rice brine uh, wax, which has been introduced by Clariant, uh, which is which has which attempts to enter uh, the market space for higher milk waxes, uh, such as uh, engineering thermoplastics and master batches. Overall, vegetable waxes will continue to grow in the next five to 10 years, uh, driven by their green label and uh, uh, their relatively low price points as compared to their uh, synthetic counterparts. Um, however, uh, in, in the longer run, these waxes may also see some limitations in growth uh, due to the negative sentiments attached to some of them and uh, other competing uh, important markets like uh, food products and uh, fuels. Uh, let's look at uh, some of the top applications for waxes. Uh, uh, candle by far is the largest application area for waxes. Um, it accounts for nearly 40% of the total demand and uh, mostly petroleum waxes are used in this application. Uh, although some, some alternative waxes like vegetable waxes have uh, have made some inroads into this application. However, uh, it is still largely dependent on petroleum waxes. And then there are other fast growing applications like uh, rheology and surface. Uh, this includes uh, markets like PVC, which is growing uh, driven by uh, growth in uh, the construction industry in Asia and other parts of the world. Uh, hot melt adhesives, which is growing driven by um, uh, packaging applications, and uh, then there is uh, um, uh, paints and coatings industry, which is again uh, uh, being driven by growth in construction as well as uh, industrial applications, and several other applications are included here. And this is one category which has seen a very strong growth of uh, alternative uh, back types, synthetic back types. Um, the end users uh, in, the, in this application area are uh, high end. Uh, end users and uh, they, they can accept uh, waxes uh, that command higher prices. They can spend more, more dollars on uh, better quality uh, ingredients in, in these applications. Boat sizing and packaging are again two applications which are still largely dependent on uh, petroleum waxes. Uh, boat sizing, uh, sizing applications uh, use uh, waxes 
uh, in form of emulsions and uh, they pretty much uh, uh, prefer uh, petroleum waxes due to their uh, lower price points as well as uh, their right characteristics. Uh, and then there are healthcare and uh, cosmetics and personal care products uh, where, uh, uh, again, waxes of other nature, such as uh, uh, vegetable waxes and synthetic waxes, uh, have seen uh, uh, some growth, some penetration. Overall, the top five applications here. Uh, are the ones that uh, that account for largest uh, volume demand uh, for vaccines uh, in the global wax market. And amongst these, uh, it is uh, it can be seen that candles, <coughs> excuse me, uh, boat sizing and packaging uh, are some of the applications which still continue to be uh, largely dependent on petroleum vaccines due to several reasons, due to the price points of these vaccines and uh, due to their properties. And as the supply of uh, petroleum wax deteriorates over uh, the next 10 year period, um, and the, the, the supply of uh, the supply situation in the overall wax market is likely to tighten. And uh, some of the more price sensitive uh, end users that exist in applications such as candles and boat sizing are likely to uh, be dropped off, or uh, these applications are likely to see a decline in uh, overall market share. And other applications such as uh, biology and surface-based applications are, uh, which can absorb uh, alternative wax types like synthetic waxes and can pay higher prices for these waxes are likely to continue to grow. So biology and surface-based uh, uh, applications uh, will uh, actually be the front runner in terms of volumetric growth. Uh, driven by induced uh, industries such as PVC, hot melt, paints, uh, inks, and coatings. Um, in fact, uh, these applications will increasingly demand uh, for more sustainable ingredients as well, uh, for which, again, synthetic and vegetable waxes will be better placed uh, with, uh, with their innovative solutions such as ethanol derived uh, PE waxes and uh, rice brine uh, or wax, which is uh, a high milk wax again. So overall, uh, of the top three applications, two of the applications, candles and boat sizing, is uh, are likely to uh, either experience a decline in next ten years or are likely to slow down. And then finally, to summarize it all, uh, on the supply side, from in the mid to long term future, base oil derived petroleum wax supply is uh, uh, is is going to erode. Uh, there are some impending uh, rationalizations of Cookman plants uh, that are uh, likely to happen in the next 10 years. There are some announced ones as well. And uh, this will also result in a decline in petroleum wax uh, supply, base oil derived petroleum wax supply. Stability in crude oil derived waxes will provide some resilience to the global wax industry. However, the growth uh, here will be primarily driven by synthetic and vegetable waxes, which will basically step up uh, to meet the growing needs of customers in the wax industry. And these, these wax types will not only fill up for the market space created by petroleum waxes, uh, but uh, will also be able to provide uh, more sustainable and uh, low carbon options. And again, on the application side, uh, the end use applications that have uh, more flexibility of switching waxes in their formulations are likely to grow, are likely to absorb changes in the wax supply uh, landscape. And with that uh, final uh, note, I would like to end my today's, uh, conclude my today's presentation. Uh, thank you for listening. I hope uh, you found this presentation useful. It was intended to provide some pointers on how the wax industry is evolving in terms of changing supply sources as well as sustainability trends. Um, I can now, uh, I think we have just two minutes left, so I can probably take uh, some quick questions, but in case you have more questions about this report or this presentation, please feel free to reach out to one of our sales contact here or uh, reach out to us at uh, webinars at clientgroup.com, or you could write directly to me as well. So quickly take uh, maybe uh, one or two questions. So uh, in the Q and A session, and uh, 
Okay, so one question uh, that I see off the top here is, uh, are uh, Montan waxes included within the estimates uh, in this, uh, in this uh, presentation? Um, Montan waxes uh, have been included within the estimates in this presentation as well as uh, we have taken into consideration the supply of Montan waxes in the, uh, uh, in the overall global wax study as well. These waxes are currently being supplied uh, primarily produced primarily in Europe. I think Clarent is one of the leading suppliers of these waxes and uh, they are pretty much used in coating and uh, automotive uh, polishing applications and maybe uh, a few other uh, plastic based applications as well, specialty applications. And yes, we do have in, in the overall global model for the study, we do have uh, the supply of Montan waxes uh, mapped to uh, various applications where it is uh, being used uh, for all the regions. Okay, maybe one more question we can take here. Hmm. Okay, so which, so, so this question basically intends to ask uh, which wax type will be the fastest growing um, wax type in, in the next 10 years. Um, as I discussed during my presentation as well, uh, we, we do, based on the current announcements in the wax industry, we do feel that uh, FT wax is one category which is uh, going to see uh, significant capacity additions or supply additions in, in, in the near future. So that could be one area which, uh, which where a lot of growth can be expected. Other than that, we also feel that byproduct PE wax is a category uh, that could see a good amount of growth in this market based on their uh, re regenerated properties and circular economy. So with that, I think uh, we have come to end of uh, our today's uh, webinar. Thank you for joining us.